as part of your broader engagement with the consumer, how do you handle the challenges that uh, that as, uh, that, that um, result from the fact that you do have this multi-country, multi-culture yeah. uh, uh, footprint? You know, that's very interesting because when you look at it from the angle of the consumers, we see very similar trends and needs and aspirations across country. You know, uh, if you look at the top three issues, um, you will see number one, packaging. So it gets different manifestation, whether you are in a country with actually very little waste management infrastructure, then the packaging issue is really about littering, you know, and, and, and packaging going to the ocean and plastic pollution. Um, where you are in a more developed country, it's about, you know, coming back from your grocery shopping and having a, a, a full bin of uh, excess uh, packaging that, that is really irritating, you know. But, but packaging and reducing the waste linked to um, the consumer good package that we buy is usually number one. And then you have, depending on uh, where people are located, you have water and energy related uh, issues, you know. And um, so, so you need to, the way you, um, you handle those are, are uh, different de depending on the region. So on water, for instance, um, it's very local, uh, but when, when it happens, it's very serious. Um, Actually, I, I, I want to mention something. I'll go back to the collaboration because I think that's a great example. You know, you remember Cape Town three years ago, maybe they faced an amazing drought yeah. to the point that they were afraid to get to what they called day zero. Day zero is basically when there is no more water at the tap. And so in the end, um, they avoided this day zero because the government said restriction of water, 50 liters per person per day. Today, uh, the average consumption per person per day is about 150 liters in Europe, up to 500 liters in some parts of the US, right? 50 liters is not much. You know, when you take an eight minute shower, uh, it's 80 liters already, you know? So you have a lot of restriction with 50 liters. And actually when we send our people there to, to understand how consumers were living with 50 liters, they were horrified because for instance, you have women with long hair who had to cut the hair because you cannot wash and rinse long hair only with 50 liters. So they had to go through a number of, um, you know, coping mechanism and that was not a good life, you know. And this is where our people decided to innovate so that you could actually live well with only 50 liters per person per day, which we now know is probably the sustainable level of water consumption. And five years later, and actually COP26, we announced the co-chair of this coalition. We have a coalition which is called the 50 liter home coalition with people from IKEA to Arcadis, Suez, Electrolux or Kohler. So across the whole value chain, the objective is to innovate so that people, both on infrastructure and product, so that people can live well, even better, with 50 liters per person per day, you know? And, and in, in uh, Glasgow, we announced that the, the co-chair uh, will be uh, Kate Gallego, and Kate is the mayor of Phoenix, fifth mm -hmm. largest city in, in, uh, in the US and top five in terms of water scarcity, you know? So this is an example of how we deal with water. We go where there is a need, but then we create something that will actually change the system. And, and the 50 liter home, like the Holy Grail on digital watermark, are actually coalition that have the power to transform the system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is how we go about it. So it's not just fixing the issue so that we can actually, uh, uh, people can use our product more in that area. It's how do we change, you know, the, the entire system. and. Um, it will be the same thing on waste management. You know, waste management, as I said, uh, we do differently. We have partnership in the US, for instance, with the recycling partnership. Objective there is to increase the uh, percentage of collection and recycling, which is still too low. It's 30% uh, in the US, way too low. But if you go to Southeast Asia, the issue is completely different. It's about helping the government to actually build waste management infrastructure. And for that, you know, we have created the, uh, we are one of the founding members of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. 
<laughs> which invest in creating, you know, scalable pilots that has to do with creating the infrastructure. So, you know, you you uh, operate very differently, whether depending on the region and where what's the manifestation of the issue. But at the consumer level, you see that the top three issues are actually basically the same, whether you are in Los Angeles or whether you are in uh, Vietnam. You know? 